ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the Southeastern Conference. Here in Starkville, they are serving up a heavy-handed helping of Cowbell. Welcome to College Football Primetime, presented by Subway. Yeah, the Bulldogs and their fans are ready. They are ready to bark. They're feeling momentum. They are feeling confidence. They're facing the former number one team in the country. Alabama has had a week filled with all the tough messaging that comes after an upset loss. Coach Saban awaits as Mike Leach's Mississippi State Bulldogs make their march in front of the faithful. It's Mississippi State and Bama. Bama on the road here at Davis Wade trying to get themselves back to where they feel they belong against this group. Good evening, everybody. Joe Tessitore alongside my partner, Greg McElroy. And let's start with this. Yes, Bama, a week ago tonight, got punched right in the gut. But they control their own destiny. And Coach Saban and some of the most vocal leaders on the Tide have been hammering home the message all week. Focus, consistency, and asking yourself, how much do you respect what it takes to win? And Nick Saban started the message in 2007 when he arrived. You either suffer the pain of discipline or the pain of disappointment. Well, we all know what Alabama suffered last week. That was clearly the pain of disappointment. He felt what led to that disappointment was an inability to prepare, was an inability to attack practice every single day and to focus on the task at hand. The challenge this week for Alabama is to respect the opposition and get better one day at a time. They felt like they had a great week of work, and they're going to be going against a very capable and confident Mississippi State football team. No doubt about that. Katie George has been talking to Coach Saban and the Tide players all week long, including Katie, their Heisman hopeful quarterback. Good evening. Well, Bryce Young echoed the same sentiments as Nick Saban. He said one loss does not define us. We can still accomplish a lot of things, but we have to play more consistently, and that starts tonight. The concern is Alabama has struggled to play well on the road this season. Nick Saban said his team did not handle the crowd noise well at the Swamp. There was improvement in College Station, but still glaring errors in this place. It's not lacking in hostility and noise either, guys. This is my first time in Stark Vegas. The cowbells are deafening. Katie, I'll warn you, you'll be hearing it for about three days. Here's what else Coach Saban had to say this week. Everybody needs to remember how they feel uh, and not forget it. You want to avoid the feeling that you have when you lose. They stopped us in the red zone. We turned the ball over on the two-yard line with an opportunity to score. They made the plays that they needed to make to win the game. Uh, we didn't make the plays we needed to make to win the game. We got to play better. Sometimes the best lessons you learn are when you do have failings. So here they are, back on the road, under the bright lights in the SEC. Can they silence the cowbells? We find out next. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Bama won the toss. They elected to defer. So Will Reichard will be kicking away to Tulu Griffin, who leads the nation in yards per kick return. Two hundred game at Bama for Coach Saban. 175 of those wins. Will Rogers, 12th start of his career, Katie. Well, I asked Will what his mindset has been prepping for Bama this week, and he said, for starters, I don't call them Bama. That's what they <laughs> want. He said, we're playing Alabama. Don't feed into the intimidation factor. And he said, in no way am I letting the fact that we beat Texas A&M and then A&M beat Alabama give us any kind of extra false confidence for this game. He said that's a trap mindset, and Rodgers wants no part in it. That was a big part of what we heard this week. Don't worry about that logo on the helmet. Yeah, you got to beat the player. They put your pants on just like everybody else. That air raid attack. Rodgers with time, and he gets it complete. His first of the game goes to Wally. Jaden Wally 
who was the leading receiver last year. And what you're going to see is some tempo from Mike Leach's team. Not crazy hyperspeed tempo like you saw at Texas Tech and Washington State, but they'll ramp it up against the defense. They got beat up pretty good last week against the Aggies. 11 yards on that first pass of the game. There's a short pitch to Johnson. And you know the role the running backs play in this offense. Marks and Johnson will see tonight. He averages less than 30 yards per game. Will Anderson, the very vocal Will Anderson this week with the tackle. Well, you see Mike Leach. He's obviously got a tremendous track record. The guy wins everywhere he goes. And they are heading in the right direction here in Starkville. Second and nine for Rodgers. Pressure comes from Anderson. He dumps it down to Johnson. It'll be a third and short. He's getting a generous mark based on where he went out there. They're saying he went for eight yards, so that'll be a first down for Mississippi State. And when you watch Will Rogers, he's very, very decisive. Does a great job of getting the ball out of his hands, so the pass rush for Alabama probably not going to be as much of a factor as it would be in a normal game. That was Will Anderson who was anxious to get in against the right tackle, Lashley. Offside. On the defense, number 31, five-yard penalty, first Anderson, one of the fastest edge rushers in the country. A guy this week who was stressing to his teammates, we have to regain focus. We have to pay attention to the small details. Down and five after the penalty. Good protection for Rodgers and gets it complete again to the 35-yard line, and it's Wally again. Great job there by Will Rogers working the over route. You see his eyes on it all the way. Finds the hole in the zone right in front of the safety, and a great catch by Wally over the middle with contact coming. A drop eight, three-man rush, as many teams do against Mississippi State in Leach's offense. Incomplete second and ten. He was looking Polk's way. When you're playing against this air raid style of attack, a lot of teams will opt to just rush three players and drop eight guys into coverage, essentially forcing Mike Leach to do what he never wants to do, and that's run the football. But what Pete Golding and Nick Saban have said all week, you got to mix the looks, because if you become predictable, Mike Leach and Will Rogers will pick you apart. There's Pete Golden, second year as the Alabama sole D.C. Incomplete looking for Polk. So it'll be third and ten. This has been a really nice drive for Mississippi State. The Will Rogers, this part of the field, potentially going to have a chance for a green light on fourth down, depending on how many you gain here. A little bit no man's land. As far as the field goal is concerned, the one thing you can't do right here is take a sack. So ball's got to come out on time against what looks like it might be a pressure look from Bama. And the pressure off the edge as they come with it. He gets it out, and that ball is intercepted. Josh Job with the interception for the tie. A great job there by Job. Pressure coming off the left, and he just falls right out underneath it with tremendous eyes. They kind of clouded that side, gave him a quick jam, thinking he's going to potentially get the hitch, just not on the same page. That hitch converts to a fade. Excellent play there by the corner, putting a stop to what was a relatively promising drive from the Bulldogs. So after the turnover, here's Bryce Young, the Heisman front runner for most of this season. And they go straight ahead with Brian Robinson, the senior from Tuscaloosa. Let's look at the Chick-fil-A impact players. When you look at Alabama, they have stars all over the field. But the two that have made the biggest impact so far, Brian Robinson and Jamison Williams at running back and wide receiver. And then this secondary, this secondary with two excellent corners, Emerson and Forbes. They're going to be on islands a lot tonight because this Mississippi State defense is going to do whatever they can to try to sell out against the run because they expect Bama to be more committed to the run tonight. Play Bolden with a five-yard reception, third down and two for the tie. And 
Mechie in motion. Third and two. Robinson. Straight ahead, powerful, strong, decisive runner and a first down. So Bryce Young was named by ESPN.com this week as midseason first team All-America. They put forth this stat, and he's only the sixth quarterback in the history of the sport with 20 passing touchdowns, 1,700 yards, and no more than three interceptions through six games. And that is in the history of college football. Robinson. Eludes the first would-be tackler and then scoots ahead to the 48-yard line. And the one thing that's most impressive about Bryce Young, you know he plays at Alabama. You know he's talented. You know he's gifted. Has a tremendous pedigree. But what I've been so impressed with is the poise. He never allows the moment to get too big for him. He's the same guy every single snap regardless of the score. It's been very impressive to watch. Second down and eight. Gets it out quickly. And he does so to John Mechie. Now those bells will be ringing again for another third down. Third and two. Pressure on Bryce Young, and he gets it complete to Mechie for a first down and more. And with a blocker in front and Slade Bolden inside the 10 and into the end zone. John Mechie with a 46-yard touchdown. And what a job with the yards after the catch. What a great job there. We men mentioned the poise that Bryce Young plays with. Just so incredibly poised. Pressure coming from Mississippi State. Unblocked defender off the left side and Jalen Green, the safety, number zero. But Mechie is there. He's the hot guy. No one's accounting for him. You got to dump it to him. Bryce Young does, and Mechie does the rest. Just an excellent start for the Crimson Tide. 46-yard touchdown. 41 of those yards after the catch. Good job by Bryce Young. Handling the pressure. You ask yourself, is he tough? Yep. Takes the hit. Is he accurate? Yep. And does he have weapons like this? Look at Mechie go. Right through that Bulldogs defense. And the tide of 7 zip. So John Mechie just scored a touchdown. That was Bama's first offensive possession. Good things typically happen, right? 45 of the last 46 they've won when they score a touchdown on their first offensive possession. Put a line through last week. Last week is the one blemish. But that's what this game is about. It's about forgetting last week at AM. And Mechie is off to a good start in helping them do that. Griffin won't have a chance again. All right, so Will Rogers back out there. Familiar name, of course, in American history. There was the great actor and columnist who said, I never met a man I didn't like. Well, football coaches have liked this man, the other Will Rogers. In fact, he was a star in high school, the same high school that Gardner Minshew went to. And it was Rogers' dad who was the offensive coordinator there. And this guy likes him too. First true freshman quarterback, in fact, to start for Mike Leach. That was a year ago. This is the 12th start of his career. On the opening drive, he came out and he was 3-for-3 three three passing. Then he went 0-for-3 and just threw an interception. With time, he's going to check down to Woody Marks. Woody Marks catches a seam and will have 12 yards and a first down. Henry Toho came up with the tackle. And one thing about Rodgers, too, as a true freshman, man, you're just thrown into the fire. And last year was not even a normal year. And to learn an offense like this, it's purely repetition-based, so difficult. He's performing better and better each week. Shovels it ahead to Marks. Marks looking for blocks, and he surges ahead for eight yards before Christian Harris makes the tackle, their most productive inside linebacker from last year's national championship team. Those inside linebackers have come, to come under some scrutiny a little bit. Both him and To'o To'o haven't exactly been off the charts good. Have had a lot of mistakes, but Nick Saban very confident in their abilities. Just have to be more fundamentally sound at the second level defensively, which is such an important part of this defense. 
Second and two, and keep it on the ground with Marks, and he'll have the first down. Well, guys, following the loss last week, Henry Toto called Jordan Battle to discuss how the two could be better leaders for this defense. They talked at great length about being more vocal, getting everyone on the same page, and ultimately keeping this group together. Battle said when we're all on the same page, we're a great defense. That pick was off to a great start. It was interesting to hear from all the tied coaches and players this week about who was vocal, who are the leaders, and so many players that don't have a lot of experience within the Alabama program. So many of the star players are the younger players, guys like Will Anderson, guys like Bryce Young. And it's kind of a difficult thing, and regardless of where you're at, whatever the standard may be, when you're a young player and you haven't played a lot, it's really tough to speak up. It That's doesn't right. matter. You might be the most gifted player in the country. Bryce Young might win the Heisman Trophy, and yet it's still sometimes difficult to get up there in front of the room and take charge of the room when you haven't been there that long. But these guys are growing and maturing, and the leadership will come as the season goes along. Second and ten. There's the slant, and it's incomplete. Keith couldn't hold on to it. To that point, Will Anderson said, hey, listen, after the close call against Florida, he put forth the message, and he felt like the message clearly wasn't taken seriously. Yeah, and that's a little bit frustrating, I think, from Nick Saban, too, because I think a lot of the guys thought, or at least a lot of the people close to the program thought, that that was the wake-up call that the program needed. However, of course, fast forward a couple weeks, you played an emotional game against Ole Miss, you come out flat the next week and get beat. Third down and ten, opportunity for the tight defense. Rodgers gets free, can he get to the line again? Great effort to dive ahead, and with that spot, they will move the chains. Good burst from Will Rogers with his legs. Very nice from Will Rogers. Excellent job. Just a rush three. Has a lot of time, but moves up in the pocket as soon as those linebackers get too much depth take off. He's a good athlete with the ball in his hands. Maybe not quite as athletic as his wide receivers, Calvin and Polk and, and obviously Wally, but very capable in keeping the defense honest with his legs. Able to get past Dallas Turner on the tight defense there. First down, trying to extend the play, and he's able to get it complete to Heath on the near side. Speaking of Dallas Turner, that's a concern for Alabama because Chris Allen's an all-SEC performer. He's out for the season as the Sam backer, the outside backer. Drew Sanders, his backup, is out second game in a row after hand surgery. So they're down to Dallas Turner, who is a big recruit, but doesn't have all the experience yet. They're really talented player, just inexperienced and young and is going to have a couple growing pains in a very important spot on that defense. Second and three. They go with an inside screen to Heath. Well blocked and another first down for Mississippi State. And I really like the tempo that Mississippi State is playing with right now. They're also doing, I think, a really good job of changing the looks for Alabama. You're getting a little bit of the run play, some of that little shovel pass draw. You're also stretching Alabama horizontally, which I think is really important because of how good and athletic Alabama is, getting them running sideline to sideline is to your advantage as an offense. Well, Nick Saban focused on that this week. He said it was one of his big concerns. Rodgers checks down to Marks. He only gets a yard there because Saban said, and when you play this kind of team that can go side to side quickly, tempo, and pass the ball constantly, you're running down the defensive linemen. You have to rotate more of them when they're constantly dealing with the short perimeter passes. And this is, I think, a really difficult part of playing this offense is that Mike Leach, Mike Leach is going to make you cover all 52 yards of field. As you take a look at the hit, Nick Saban saying, hey, hit with your head up a moment ago as Joe ducked his head, but no targeting. Josh Job, who had the interception earlier, that is well overthrown of Malik Heath to the outside. It'll be third down and nine. It's a couple times now where Will Rogers hasn't been on the same page with his wide receivers on the fade route. That's such a huge route in this offense. His receivers have released inside. He's thrown it outside. It resulted in one interception, and then, obviously right there, a long foul ball. Got to make sure they tighten those things up. If they can't hit the fades, then Alabama is going to continue to get aggressive at the line of scrimmage all night long. Will Anderson, see if he can get after Will Rogers here. Has 11 TFLs on the season, third in the nation, most in the conference. Third and nine. Incomplete. Beyond Polk, Makai Polk, who's had a sensational season. Came up huge in the upset at AM a couple weeks ago. 
but they couldn't connect Rodgers and Polk. That was a good route there by Polk. Ball just a little high on Will Rogers. One that he'd love to have back because that was an opportunity there for the conversion. So Brandon Rees comes on. He's been out of action since September 11th. Hasn't kicked since the NC State game. Has 10 career field goals in 12 attempts. This from 44. Right down the middle. Well struck from Rees. So Mississippi State gets on the board with a 12 play drive capped with a field goal. We talked on the last drive just how important the fade pass is for this Mississippi State offense. As you can see, Will Rogers working the fade down here to the left to Malik Heath. Heath releases inside. Mm. The throw's outside. Well, what do you do when you're a quarterback? Go talk to your wide Hey, man, outside. We're outside. You see him talking to Heath. No, I thought it was going. No, you got to go outside because that's where I think you're going to be. Just a great job there by the young quarterback making sure that after a mistake and a miscommunication between him and his guy, let's go get on the same page. Let's talk about it so it doesn't happen again. You said how critical that pattern is in this Mike Leach offense. What a scene here at Davis Wade. Just a 90 minute drive from one school to the other. Jamison Williams has two kickoff return touchdowns earlier this year against Southern Miss. Remember he had that opening one for 100 yards. He can blaze. Williams from a yard into the end zone. Williams. Oh, the kicker slows him down. And then he's brought down just beyond the 40. Let's go to the studio, check in with Matt and the guys. Hey guys, good evening. Time now for your All-State celebration moment. Zeb Nolan came in in relief for South Carolina through the game-winning touchdown with under 40 to play. Cocky gets by Vanderbilt 21 to 20, keeping the Carolina Cedric Gray. This is probably the only defensive play made in the game, and it won it for North Carolina. 45-42 in a shootout with Miami. Thank you, Matt. Bryce Young was three for three, 57 yards, had the touchdown on the first drive. 7-3, Bama. Yeah, press coverage in the slot. Oh, backing out of it. Of course, they got this, Mr. Reliable in that offense, Brian Robinson, but he is stacked up by a pretty active Bulldog front. That was Nathan Pickering with the tackle. And when we talked with Bill O'Brien this week, the offensive coordinator for Alabama, he said, man, last week we didn't do a good enough job communicating with our quarterback about when to take the RPOs. Sometimes you just got to hand it to your big beast of a running back, Brian Robinson. So far you could see today fewer RPOs being called, more call it and run it handoffs for the outstanding tailback. Second and nine, a gap pressure is picked up well. Downfield strike, Young overthrows Messi. And a flag comes in as the coverage came from Martin Emerson. Emerson's a big corner, goes 6'2", 200 pounds. And he's not used to getting a lot of action. A lot of opponents avoid throwing his way. This cornerback tandem is excellent. Emerson and Forbes do a great job. There is no foul on the play. The pass interference. They say no P.I. So they're going to walk it back. And that'll make it a third down and nine. Third and nine. Young scrambling, and then Young is driven down by Nathaniel Watson. Buki Watson, the Swiss Army knife of these linebackers, who does it all, plays it all with the sack of Bryce Young. 
And you're going to see Buki Watson right on the hash, right in the middle of the field. He's essentially spying the quarterback, but he's actually also kind of responsible for the running back there in man coverage. As soon as that running back gets held up, it frees him up, and he drops Bryce Young for the sack. Great play by the linebacker. James Burnham, the Australian on the punt for Alabama. Austin Williams back to return for Mississippi State, and he feels the fair catch at about the 15. So the Bulldogs defense does a little damage, and now Will Rogers back out there to bark. You know the deal how to get your Sunday NFL day going. With 10 a.m. Eastern viewing of Sunday NFL Countdown, they're going to give you the latest on the undefeated Cardinals. They're going to be without their head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. That is tomorrow's Sunday NFL Countdown. Hey, let's look at our AT&T 5G sky cam. At the spectacle that is Davis Wade when the tide comes to town. And put in over 61,000. Sounds like 161,000 with those 10 inches of steel at the end of the handle. Johnson. That's a good run when it comes to this offense, isn't it? Dylan Johnson. As he goes ahead for nine. Yeah, it's amazing to see just how unwilling Mike Leach is to try to run the football from time to time. He does not like it. I've talked to Dana Holgerson, a bunch of guys from his tree, Lincoln Riley. They all say, yeah, Coach Leach kicked us out. We're, we're not in the air raid family anymore. <laughs> we run the ball too often. It's funny, man. He's done a heck of a job, though. Everywhere he's been. There's the slant as he was looking for Austin Williams. And that is incomplete. Third down and one. Of course, the quick strike passing game and utilizing both these running backs is just an extension of what he would consider the run game. Johnson remains the back guy who dedicated himself in the weight room during the quarantine went from 190 pounds to 215 pounds now in his sophomore year. Rogers on third and one and here is Johnson out of the backfield and it's going to pend on the spot and with that forward progress they give it to him as he had hooked up with Daniel Wright the safety who came up for the tackle but it's a first down for Mississippi State and a good fight there at the line of the game but when you look at this Mississippi State offense and what Mike Leach has been in the past I mean he wants to run a million plays he wants to go over and over and over again he's adjusted the way he's played here in Starkville and it's starting to produce some real legitimate results Rogers that ball is intercepted and on the return is battle and you can make it a pick six Jordan battle and how good does that feel for this guy? A week ago, he got called on what he felt was a very ticky-tack pass interference, and that upset at A&M. And he starts off this game just like that. The most non-offensive touchdowns in the last 15 seasons of college football. The Tide have. There's another. Two interceptions already for this defense who was challenged inside that facility this week. When I first saw that throw, I felt like Will Rogers just a little bit late. But when I looked at his feet, it's really not too bad. He hitches twice. Would like to have seen him hitch once. The problem, however, is how far the throw is made from the far right hash all the way to the far boundary, and it's thrown inside. you got to throw away from the defender. That's an unbelievable play there by Jordan Battle. And that's the difference sometimes between playing Bama and playing most college football teams is the closing speed. The windows when you're playing against an Alabama defense are NFL-like windows. They close in a hurry. The receiver was open. However, Will Rogers learned quickly that those throws have to be anticipated. You can't throw them late, and you certainly 
can't miss him on the wrong side of the wide receiver. Paid the ultimate price there, but a great play by the outstanding safety. So now the two interceptions. Josh Job had one. Jordan Battle with the pick six. So 14 points come off the two Mississippi State turnovers. Nick Saban talked all week long about keeping the right headspace. All that rat poison he loves to reference. Now, now you got to stay focused. You got to preach being in the right frame of mind, being able to execute. This defensive backfield has early on for sure. Well, let's get an update with Matt. All right, guys, been an interesting day for the Big 12. Iowa State, one of the trendy picks to start the season, three and two. This is the first offensive play of the game against Kansas State. Brees Hall, 75-yard touchdown. Cyclones up early, 7-0. What about the ACC? Devin Leary to Devin Carter. Which Devin you like more? My vote goes to Carter. NC State up early on Boston College, 7-0. Incredible concentration there by Carter as the ball was right in the small of the back of a Boston College defender, and somehow he got it in for the score. Rodgers absolutely swarmed. Byron Young with the sack. And now this defense is firing off every which way. And right there, Will Rogers thinks he's able to work right into the pressure. However, it's a great job again by the safety, Daniel Wright, cutting off that slant. And had he thrown it, it would have resulted in another interception. So actually, I know the sack, not what you want if you're Mississippi State, but it was a far better decision there by Rogers to hang on it, take the sack, and live to play second down. Second 15. Gets this complete to the 29-yard line as he goes to Makai Polk. Junior, who Leach originally recruited to Washington State, but Polk went to Cal. Then he said, you know what, I think I do want to be part of that air raid. So he made his way here He transferred from Cal this past spring. He's done a great job, too. I mean, being that receiver on the right side, oftentimes a lot of individual opportunities where he has to win one-on-ones, and he's been able to make them more often than not these last few weeks, really coming on strong and developing chemistry. They're down in five. Look at all the traffic and congestion coming in with Christian Harris smashing down Will Rogers, and Rogers is clearly banged up. Sacked two times in the last three plays, and he is in a lot of pain. See him reaching up towards that right shoulder. And hope he's okay, but this is on the offensive line, man. I mean, you give up big pressure right in the inside gap to Brian Branch. And then, obviously, Harris is there to clean it up. As you can see, Rodgers grabbing at the right shoulder. That is obviously very concerning for Mississippi State. Archer Trafford on to punt. JoJo Earl, the extremely dangerous freshman, is the return man. As Trafford has this bounce outside the numbers, plays a little keep away from the freshman from Texas. Week six, Monday Night Football. You get to see Josh Allen and the Bills. Great looking team against the Tennessee Titans. The AFC South leading Titans. That is 8 Eastern on ESPN. Monday Night Countdown begins at 6 p.m. Judy Rogers, and you can see the look of concern on her face after her son Will was just sacked hard into the ground and came off in pain. Young to pass on first down. Robinson out of the backfield. Spins for a few extra yards. Tackled by Forbes. And this is imperative for Mississippi State's defense. I mean, they have to. Have to hold Alabama to at most a field goal on this drive. Your quarterback just went off in pain. They're looking at his throwing shoulder. You cannot give up a touchdown here. Second and six. Robinson is going to cross midfield and have the first down. Local Tuscaloosa phenom. Growing up, he was always the best player around. Best athlete, the locals always say. He was in seventh grade. He was already strong enough to dunk a basketball. 6'1", 225 pounds now as a redshirt senior. He's transformed his body, man. I mean, he looks tremendous. Loose and has been excellent for the Tide this year. Couldn't wiggle free that time. 
And as immediately he's brought down by Jack Harris. Like a lot of people thought that it was not going to be Brian Robinson. He would be the Robin to Trey Sanders or Jace McClellan's Batman. But man, that could not have been more inaccurate. Robinson's been the bell cow so far. Second and 12. That is incomplete. He's looking for a to. Like we said a second ago, massive down here for the Mississippi State defense. Let's see if defensive coordinator Zach Garnett decides to bring some pressure. Last time he did, he was burned because Bryce Young had an answer for it. He was able to get rid of the football quickly. Looks like a pressure look, though, with three Mississippi State defenders lined up outside the hash to the left. Third down and 12. Gets the protection he wants. Goes short to Bolden and he's ripped down right away by Emerson. Emerson closed immediately on Slade Bolden. A huge play there for Mississippi State. You see Rodgers now seeing whether or not he's going to be okay. He is a tough kid. So hopefully he'll be all right. Looks like the Bulldogs might be backed up and to have a backup quarterback come in in a backed up situation for his first snap, that would be very concerning. So hopefully Rodgers is okay. Burnup punting again. Back rotation. Looking to pin this inside the 10. What a great checkup. Inside the 10 and down by Slade Bolden. James Burnup did it perfectly. The big six foot six Australian pins the Bulldogs. Very nice there on the punt, as it looks like it is going to be Will Rogers. I think all Mississippi State fans can breathe a sigh of relief. He's been their bread and butter at quarterback, and obviously in an offense that's driven and geared towards maximizing the amount of repetitions you get, it's obviously of the utmost importance to have him in the game. So Mike Leach's young quarterback sacked two times on that last possession. Came off the field hurting and he's right back after there after his defense did a nice job and a strike to Austin Williams. And you can tell he is in pain. He's reaching for that right shoulder. And that is the final play of this first quarter. Will Rogers showing toughness. But Alabama is showing bounce back resilience and talent a week after the upset. John Mechie said, watch me go. 46 yarder there. And then Jordan Battle. Why don't I just pick six it? 14-3 tie. Glad you're with us watching the SEC. On ESPN, you can sign me up for some two brothers smoke meats anytime you want when you're in Starkville. This is Dylan Johnson, and Johnson will have the first down here to open up this second quarter in Starkville for the home team. Joe Tessitore, Greg McElroy, Katie George with you. A year ago it was Bama 41 zip in Tuscaloosa. First team to shut out Mike Leach in his 20 years as a head coach. And here we've got 14 to 3, and Mississippi State had 100 total yards in that first quarter. Will Rogers pumps and survives that as Will Anderson couldn't take him down and then gets it complete to Polk for a first down. Anderson was caught at Rogers' legs. Rogers somehow survived it, and you can see him still dealing with that pain. As you see right here, a good job of evading Anderson and keeping your eyes downfield. But how about the grimace after the fact? Makes a nice throw and then grabs his shoulder, man. That's something to keep an eye on all game long. This kid is tough as nails. My goodness, that throwing shoulder clearly not at 100%. That pain happened on the second time that he was sacked. He was driven into the ground late in the first quarter. Avoids the pressure, sidearms it, and gets it complete. That's Tulu Griffin who's the fastest player on the team. Some around here say, hey, maybe the fastest player in the SEC. 
was the MVP of their bowl game a year ago. That's one thing that's changed really quickly is the personnel for Mississippi State has transformed quickly to trying to find fast guys that really can create on their own in space and some excellent running backs catching the football. Showing pressure and there's movement on the right side. It looked like Scott Lashley, the transfer actually from Bama, may have moved. False start. Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Let's go back and take a look at the hit that led to Rogers' shoulder being less than 100%. Right here, he kind of lands as Christian Harris lands on him. It's that right shoulder that he continues to grab. And that was on a sack towards the end or towards the latter part of the first quarter. Second and 11. Rodgers floating to the right. Flags are down, often holding the case in a situation like that. Year number two for Mike Leach, two-time National Coach of the Year. Well, guys, Mike Leach said Will Rogers has improved in a variety of ways this offseason, but he's really asserted himself as a leader. What better way to continue to gain the respect of your teammates as the leader of this team than playing through this pain? And that's a big part. I mean, much like Bryce Young we talked about a little earlier, I mean, it's tough to get up in front of the room and to be the alpha dog when you haven't played that much. And he's growing, and he's learning, and he's working incredibly hard and has a great feel for the offense. Now, you talk to Mike Leach, most of the guys that start for Mike Leach have been in the system three or four years. You look back, Texas Tech, a lot of those guys didn't start in some cases till their fourth or fifth year. Will Rogers thrown into the fire. He's going to get better and better as the, his career progresses. They are showing pressure again. They bring it against the left side. They go with a tunnel screen. And does the call work? Yes, perfectly. Makai Polk able to weave his way behind the pressure. And the Bulldogs get a first down. Good call by Leach. And really nice against the pressure. Right now, Bama has continued to bring pressure, probably knowing that Will Rogers is less than 100%. Let's see if they can make him more uncomfortable by applying that pressure via the blitz. Well, the one way to neutralize that blitz is by hitting the screens and draws. That time, very nicely done on the tunnel. Polk has three receptions so far. That is batted by Anderson right at the line of scrimmage. And that's a good active play by Will Anderson. Preseason All-America. He's Man, just, he can fly, can he? He's exceptional. You know, they got that GPS tracking system, right? They clocked him going from standstill to five yards at 10.7 miles per hour. <laughs> that's amazing. Not surprised. And that's obviously for a guy that puts his hand in the dirt. It's going to make a lot of money because of that burst through the first 10 yards. Second and 10 just gives it to Johnson straight ahead. And Johnson searching for anything. He's going to be tackled for a loss as a flag is down as Jalen Armour Davis came up and made the tackle. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. You see Johnson now going to the sideline, which means Woody Marks will obviously end the game. Standing running back from Mississippi State. Reminds me so much of the running backs that Mike Leach had forever at both Texas Tech and at Washington State. Guys that are so good in the passing game and really creative with the ball in their hands. Second and 20, they drop a three-man pressure, and from behind and taking him down is Anderson. Did he come to play? The guy that looked around at everybody in the locker room on Monday after the loss to AM and said, regain focus, pay attention. And if you're going to issue the challenge, you got to back it up. And if there's one thing that Will Anderson does, you talk to any of his teammates, you talk to any of his coaches, that dude works his tail off every day. And as a result, 
he is reaping the rewards here tonight in Starkville. Against his old friend Scott Lashley. Third and 19. Rogers, plenty of time, but goes underneath to Woody Marks. So it'll be fourth down. Rogers, you can see favoring that right shoulder, will trot off. Saban's defense playing with some fire tonight. Archer Trafford on. He was born in Budapest, Hungary. Trained eight years in the World Archery Championships. Jojo Earl, the deep man, is going to put his heels on the 10 yard line for Archer's punt. As it angles outside the numbers and runs well out of bounds. More to come from Starkville when we return. Matt Barry in our college football studios with an update on Oklahoma TCU. We should tell you Caleb Williams got the start. Kennedy Brooks gets him on the board first 7-0. Caleb's been running this offense at a high clip early. Watch this throw to Jeremiah Hall on the money. 14-0 Sooners. Matt Caleb Williams, 6 of 6 passing, 88 yards, the touchdown early on for Oklahoma. Joe Greg and Katie back here in Starkville. 14-3 tie, starting from inside the 10-yard line. Young from his own end zone. And he's going to have to do that just to escape. And then he's pushed out very hard at the end right there by Watson. And the flag comes with it. Buki Watson gave him a little extra. I just don't know what Buki Watson was thinking there. You hear the crowd not happy with it. It looked like it was really close. Just lost track of where he was at, but man, the hit was enormous. See, as these guys are talking, we'll see. There is no foul for a late hit. The player was inbound and he was hit. So they say Bryce Young inbound, so there is no flag. Very, very close there. Right. There. I think it's a good call. I mean, the hit was enormous. As you can see, Bryce Young, not the biggest guy in the world, went flying. But man, way too close. Look to Watson. Don't want to give any free yards to this Crimson Tide team. Be mindful of where the sideline is. Buki's got him by 50 pounds, and he just launched him. Absolutely launched him past the white border where the cheerleaders stand. Second and 10. Young. What accuracy while using the fleet feet, and he gets it to John Mechie for a tied first down. 18-yard reception by Mechie, who had the 46-yard touchdown to open our night. And that's one thing that Bryce Young does such a great job of, is moving in the pocket, making a quick decision as he attacks the line of scrimmage, and delivering the football. Goes back against the green, incomplete. Well, you know the start to the season that Bryce Young had. He's number three nationally in touchdown passes. Just sensational. Over 1,700 passing yards. Of course, last week the loss at a &M. It was interesting last week because he was off to such a good start. And ESPN Stats and Info said last week he threw more off-target passes than he did in his first five starts combined. Threw 13 off-target passes last week. And as this goes to Williams, Williams is corralled. Of course, Williams the speedy transfer from Ohio State. It's going to be third down, and it's going to be Cowbells up. Emerson with the second down tackle. Third and eight. Young. Over the middle, complete to Mechie again. And Mechie has been awesome 
in this first half as he adds to his total. A flag is down. We will check on that. But it's a 19-yard completion to Mechie for that third down conversion as of right now. And as a curious Nick Saban looks on. Might be getting Jamison Williams with a block in the back, yeah. Well, you see Nick Saban not happy, and Jamison Williams was on the outside to the right, and he kind of just pushed his defender actually into Mechie. Illegal block in the back. Number one on the offense. Ten-yard penalty. The play still results in a first down. As you can see up top, watch him up top, and he just pushes Emerson from behind right into Mechie. I'm just, well, I'm to not, no advantage. I don't know why you would do that. There is no advantage with the penalty. He pushed the man into the ball carrier. Still results in a first down, but not a very smart play there by the transfer from Ohio State, who's been electric here in the first half of the season with the ball in his hands and beating people over the top. So with the spot foul, it is still a first down for Alabama. And now Robinson. And Robinson, the guy who had to wait his turn. Of course, Najee Harris was doing his thing. And now Brian Robinson is the man this year for the tie. He goes for 10 yards. And this is the style of offense that I think most people anticipated from Alabama. They thought that Bryce Young was going to maybe take some time to develop. He's been such a star here early in the season, but you thought it'd be more stretch, more two tight end sets, more off tackle run plays. Look at the time that he has as he goes to Robinson and good pursuit. Defense is hustle and they hustled there. Jack Harris among the group to make the tackle on Robinson. One thing so far tonight, the protection for Alabama has been really good. And that, of course, was a huge point of emphasis last week after they really did not play well along the offensive line, in particular the right side of that offensive line, really struggling against the Aggies. But so far, they've been pretty solid against a pretty good Mississippi State front. Right tackle Chris Owens had a tough go of it last week, much better this week as Roy Dill Williams gets the carry. Roy Dill Williams has been taken on the reps with Jace McClellan who is out injured for the remainder of the season. So it was Robinson McClellan, but now you see Williams getting some work. Third down and four. If I'm Mississippi State, I'm looking in the direction of John Mechie. He's at the top as he motions inside. He's been their go-to guy on third down. They've already targeted him five times tonight. He has four receptions for 87 yards. Third and four, a gap pressure, nobody picks it up. Quick release though, does damage to Williams and a first down. Great awareness by Bryce Young, right in the face of pressure. And Nathaniel Watson was coming straight in, Greg. Just so good there by Bryce Young. I mean, so poised, sees the pressure, knows it's unblocked. You have five guys getting out in the route tree, which means you gotta get rid of it and you own the blitzer. He does on the angle route, just an excellent conversion, great poise by the sophomore quarterback. And Bill O'Brien talks about his maturity. There's a prime example. Williams, not much there, maybe two and a half yards. You see a young player have such good feel for protection, such good feel for when there's gonna be unblocked defenders. There's very few that do it better than him, and to think he's only 19 years old is pretty remarkable. 11th play of this drive coming that started at their own seven yard line. And now they're inside the 30 as Mechie with yet another reception. They are having a matchup problem trying to stay with John Mechie. And I love talking to Bill Bryan this week saying, you know what? Right now, we're targeting Jamison Williams and John Mechie a little too much. we got to spread the ball. I think he's going back on that. <laughs> you right. see, the plan so far is to find isolations, find the opportunities for John Mechie, and he's responded. 97-yard first half already. 
And he's digging ahead to the 26 yard line for four yards is Robinson. I think that's part of what makes playing this offense so incredibly difficult. What do you want to take away? Do you want to take away the run game? Fine. You're going to give one on ones to all American candidate wide receivers and Jamison Williams and John Mechie. You want to take away the pass game? Perfect. No problem. Run the football with Brian Robinson, who's having an All-American style campaign as well. I mean, this is a pick-your-poison style of offensive attack, and it's so difficult for these defenses to defend. Rayshon Holden motions into the backfield, and they look his way as they swing it around. He used to do this with Devontae Smith, and look at the speed of Holden inside the 10-yard line. For Treshawn Holden, the sophomore from Florida, had a catch a week ago against AM on a field goal drive then. A really nice job here, getting through your progression very quickly and hit the outlet. You got a guy running with a full head of steam, but it's this part of the field that makes Bama fans a little anxious because this is the part of the field that plagued them last week. In the red zone, let's see if they commit to the run unlike they did last week. That was the criticism specifically in the fourth quarter when they had the ball in the three-yard line. And, of course, they do run it this time with Robinson as he gets it down to the three-yard line. They had first and goal at the three-yard line last week against A&M. They passed the ball three straight times, settled for a field goal, and the Twitter machine nearly went off the rails. I got a dollar since they handed off again. What do you think, Tess? Which side do you take? That is a lock. That is secretariat <laughs> in the Belmont, my friend. Here we go. And the thoroughbred of choice is in the backfield. This guy, Brian Robinson, can go. And you know that left side of the line with Evan Neal can clear the path. Robinson lowers the shoulders and was met at the one-yard line. He was met by Watson, who's been all over the place tonight. I think you have two downs still. If you're Alabama, you have two downs to get it. Right now, looking like an empty formation. Let's see if they motion Robinson back into the backfield. He's split out of top. Here he comes. It's exactly what they do. Third and goal. And we're going to get a timeout called here. What will the play call be on third and goal when we return to Stark Vegas? ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway and in part by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Sylvester Kroom, the Alabama legend who became the first African-American head football coach in the SEC when he was here at Mississippi State and then beat his alma mater, his alma mater, beat Bama back in 07. That is the last win Mississippi State has had against Bama. Of course, Greg, you are backup quarterback on that Bama team. Third down and goal for Coach Saban. The frustrations a week ago when they passed three times and settled for a field goal. Here they have been giving it to Brian Robinson. What are you looking for here, Greg? I think you challenge your offensive line all week. You say, hey, when you get down this part of the field, it's on y'all. We're going to hand it off. We're going to hand it off. I expect to see two more runs if they don't get it on third down. Out of the eye formation, Robinson right in. Touchdown tie. That's the way you do it when you're built by Bama. Just a really nice lead there up on the linebacker. And an excellent job by Robinson, powering his way into the end zone. It was a nice stand there for the most part from Mississippi State, but just too much. As you can see, the message was taken and received by those offensive players. You get this part of the field, they're going to run the football. Robbie Utes with the lead block. That offensive line with All-American Evan Neal and company. Remember, a 93-yard drive. They started on their own seven, and then they did it the old-fashioned way. 21 to 3. Taco Bell welcomes you to the Lit Moss Student Section of the Year contest. Use hashtag Student Section Sauce. You can get the committee's attention. 
Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell and you can see how your school can compete. Of course, this crowd loves to compete on Friday afternoons when they have the land rush at the junction to see where you get your tailgate spot. And they know how to do that really, really well. Let's go to Matt in the studio. Guys, coming up on the Mercedes EQ Halftime Report, it was a dog's day in Athens. Georgia continues to roll. Plus, Purdue beats the number two out of Iowa. We'll have highlights of that. And Caleb Williams, QB1 for Oklahoma. They were rolling early. We'll have highlights of Sooners. TCU, Jess Palmer, Joey Galloway joining me coming up. So the air quotes number two team in the country, Iowa, loses by 17. Cincinnati was number three. They rolled, and here's the tie up 21 to 3. I, these numbers next to names right now, when these CFP rankings come out, I think things are going to look very different. Will Rogers on first down. Sent back by Anderson and has to burn it. Tess Craig, Will Rogers continues to speak with athletic trainers and the team doctor in between drives. He's continued to stretch his right arm while getting some throws in as well. I've seen him wince, grimace while doing so, so it's something he's definitely still dealing with. As you can see him grabbing that shoulder. They just dropped the flag. They talked it over. Intentional grounding on the offense. Number two. It's a spot foul. Loss of down. Second down. There was nobody over there. He went straight back. Wasn't outside the tackle box. And Will Anderson was coming at him. Yeah, and the ball never crossed the line of scrimmage either. So it was basically, if there's ever going to be an obvious intentional grounding, this was the one. It was a great job by Will Anderson applying the pressure on the TE. He beats the right guard. Forces the ball out of Will Rogers' hands a little bit too quickly. 31's been a monster tonight. They got to find an answer for him because him working against Lashley, the right tackle, that's been advantage Alabama. Spot foul makes it second and 22, but he's going to launch for more than 22 downfield, and he's going to get in with Malik Heath. And just like that, still clutching his right shoulder, the Bulldogs are on the go as Heath got it over Armour Davis. Just a great throw there, giving your wide receiver a chance. So often you see young guys throwing it way too far. He's obviously less than 100%. That right shoulder hurting him, but he gave his receiver a chance, and Heath made an excellent play on the football. For 43 yards. Three-man rush, tests the other side, and gets it complete. And that's exactly what you were talking about earlier with Makai Polk and what Rodgers was saying over on the sideline. 100%. The fade in this offense is as important as any throw you have to make. This time they opt to work the back shoulder and he's on the same page with Polk. Really close there as the feet came down. It's a beautiful throw. 63 yards just on the last two passes alone. Inside screen, this has worked well previously. Not this time at all as Josh Do Job takes down Polk. Job had the interception on the opening drive as well. And you wonder too with Rogers' shoulder how much velocity would he be able to get on the football? Most of the throws after the injury have been underneath. The last two, that stretched the velocity, that stretched the distance that he could throw it. So clearly not limited right now with how far he can push it downfield. Second and ten, Marks on the run. Marks gets a good block and Marks! Drives the legs ahead to move the chains for the Bulldogs. He goes for 10 yards. A really nice drive so far from Mississippi State. Getting some points here would be massive to give them some momentum and life heading into halftime. Quick strike on the slant. As this time he goes to Jameer Calvin. He's the transfer from Washington State who followed Mike Leach to Mississippi State and Rogers calls a timeout. He is wincing. He is in pain, but he is tough, gutsy, and bringing his team down the field as his mom looks on. The look of a mom knowing her son's in pain. Judy on the right, Will Rogers on the left. 
Well, as you can see, I mean, just as a parent, every parent you just wants your kid to be safe and, and everything. And obviously Judy right now feeling the pain that her son is experiencing in his right shoulder. Hasn't Will affected him this drive, though. He's been, he's been money on this drive. Has he ever. Second and six at the 10-yard line. Got to have it kind of drive for the Bulldogs before the half. They go back to the receiver screen. Was that dangerous as Malachi Moore thought perhaps I could be going the other way with it. And Byron Young was coming in on Will Rogers. Third down and six. It's pretty clear that Alabama's made an adjustment on those tunnel screens because they were there early. The last couple times they tried to go to it though. Nothing going for the Bulldogs. See if they try to get it to Woody Marks here on the edge. Get him isolated in a one-on-one -on -one with Henry to Oto. That's what I'd be looking for if I'm Will Rogers. He's the running back flanking Rogers to the right. Looks to the right. Pressure up the middle and driven down again by a completely inspired, menacing Will Anderson. And if you look at this, man, I mean, you can't leave your right tackle on an island. I don't care. Scott Lashley's doing the best he can. There are NFL right tackles that cannot block Will Anderson one-on-one. -on -one. So when you see those guards not looking, and he's all alone, and the right guard is sliding actually from right to left, and his eyes are inside, he needs to help his tackle out because that's just far too tough a task for Scott Lashley. That's the fourth sack now, and Will Anderson has been a big result of those sacks. They gotta make some adjustments to the protection because Bama will just pin their ears back and tee off if you leave their pass rushers in one-on-one -on -one situations. Brandon Rees will trot on. After a promising drive and gritty work from Will Rogers, but man, tonight it just seems like nobody can hang with the All-American Will Anderson of the tie. This is gonna be a 37 attempt for Rees, made from 44 earlier. And he puts it through. Probably going to take some sevens rather than threes if you want to threaten this Bama team tonight. Fighting spirit. That moment brought to you by Modelo. And how about the spirit of Will Anderson? Just the tenacious pass rush all night long working against his former teammate, the transfer from Alabama, now here. And Mississippi State's got Lashley. I mean, they've tried to double team him occasionally, but it just hasn't worked. They have no answer right now for number 31, and they need to find one because he's the type of player that can single-handedly take over a game, and he's done it so far in the first 30 minutes. Listen, the guy grew up with five older sisters. He can handle a lot. <laughs> he says, they pushed me more than anybody pushed me. And now he's been trying to push his teammates. the Alabama defender walking off. That was Brian Branch walking off, who last week stepped in for Malachi Moore when Moore was ejected for targeting. Plays that star position. They've had some struggles against the Aggies. And Alabama here, as you see Branch going off, that last offensive drive, very methodical. The offense that we actually thought Alabama might be. 16 plays and eating a bunch of clock as well before finishing it in the end zone with a run play. Let's see if they can try to steal some points before the half. 59 seconds remaining here. 21 to six. Well, Rogers, couple of interceptions. One of them returned for a pick six. That was by Jordan Battle. Bryce Young for Alabama, 142 yards passing. A touchdown pass to Mechie. Brian Robinson had the hard earned short yardage touchdown run. Biggest thing here, if you're Bryce Young, you obviously just have to be so smart with the football. This part of the field, let's see if Nick Saban opts to run the ball on the first down play. See if they get a first down, get out past the 35, and then they start their two minute operation. Let's see what he opts to go with here. Robinson's 12th carry of the game off right tackle. What a nice move to get something extra, and he goes for nine yards. An excellent job there by the right tackle. Guy that was given a lot of criticism last week, Chris Owens, doing an excellent job there at the point. 
and allowing Robinson to secure the edge. Second and one as Robinson is right on that line again. Get be at, Johnson with the tackle. It'd be at this point where Nick Saban went off to likely put it into hyperdrive as he's very frustrated. As you can see, very frustrated with the spot, thinking they had a first down, and then he had to burn a tine out there. I want to look at this spot. With that Robinson reaching out. Let's take a look. It's a nice tackle there by Jet Johnson. Where is Robinson down? It does appear that that right elbow and the knees are down. Where's the ball at that point? I think if they reviewed it, it wouldn't be enough to necessarily overturn. But expect Alabama to pick up this first down by trying to run the football, and then they'll get into their two-minute operation with a no huddle. Third and one because of that mark. So they give it to Robinson. Easily has it, and a heck of a lot more to the 45-yard line where Johnson takes him down. Here comes your two-minute. Clock stop for a half second. You got your play call already made. And Bama's ready to snap it immediately. Young. Incomplete, 24 seconds remain. They do have the one timeout. He's trying to connect with Latu. That's a big thing for Bryce Young here in a two minute. Ball's got to come out of your hands really quickly. Cannot hang on the football. If nothing's there initially, no problem. Throw it 12 rows into the stands. Come back to play third down. Twenty seconds and a half. Pressure comes in on Bryce Young. It was Jet Johnson. He's the team's leading tackler. And he has been a spark plug this season for the Bulldogs defense. 19 seconds remain. And a really good pressure there. He works right inside as the defensive end secures both the left guard and the left tackle. As Johnson breaks free. That's an excellent rush and a really nice game drawn up by the defensive coordinator for Mississippi State, Zach Arnett. They are six of eight on third downs. Third down and ten. They go with Williams. Remember, they have the one timeout. And I'm surprised Mississippi State's not trying to take a timeout here and maybe try to block a punt. That's right. Those last seconds are ticking down. The question was, how would Bama respond? The answer is with a defense that had a couple of interceptions, including a pick six. 21 to six, let's get the halftime report. Yeah. We got a great night in Starkville, ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Subway. 21 to six, number five, Alabama on top, on the road. This was Katie with Coach Saban at the half. Coach Saban, Will Anderson has been a force leading your defense. What did you think of that group's performance in the first two quarters? Well, I think really what we have to do here is keep affecting the quarterback. You know, when we rush four guys, we're getting decent pressure. When we rush three guys, we're not. So, you know, we just got to keep mixing it up on them, and uh, they do a pretty good job. So we can't give up big play. We can't play this kind of game and give up a big play like we did right there before the half. Consistency was something you preached all week. What needs to continue offensively in the next half? Well, you know, we, we need to do a little better. We're not running it very well. They got a good front. Uh, we've been effective throwing it. We put together a really good drive here to get to 21. So we just got to keep playing. Thank you for the time. All right, thank you. Says he wants to run it better. Robinson's got 57 yards. Bryce Young passing 142 yards and a touchdown. And they get the ball to start this second half. All right, so Saban says keep affecting the quarterback. Well, when you got number 31, you can affect the quarterback. <laughs> Will Anderson's got four tackles. He's got two sacks, and he's got a pass broken up. He, he's been unbelievable, absolutely unstoppable. And Mississippi State, my sole goal, if I was that offensive coordinator, Mike Leach, I would think I can't let 31 continue to get one-on-ones. I mean, it's been unbelievable. He's won almost every single one. It's resulted in obviously a very productive day defensively. And as far as the offense is concerned, I think Alabama's been pretty efficient. Just hasn't had a whole lot of opportunities to really take the top off the defense. So expect them to continue to lean on the run game, but Mississippi State defense better be careful 
because the play action pass will come at some point. And walking into the box, play action off of it. Bryce Young gets the quick strike to Williams. And when Williams turns the corner, look at this. He's gone. Jamison Williams. One play, one magical moment to start the second half. 75 yard touchdown. That's twice now that these Alabama wide receivers have broken free on a yards after catch, but how about the block by John Mechie out in front? This is a tackle for a really nice game for Alabama. If Mechie doesn't do a good enough job of shielding away Forbes, the corner, as a result, one of the fastest guys in the SEC breaks it for a touchdown. Excellent start for the Crimson Tide. What an addition to this Alabama offense Jamison Williams has been. One of the fastest playmakers in all of college football. Remember, Katie, he had the 94-yard touchdown catch against Miami. That was the second longest in Alabama history. Now he opens up the second half with a 75-yarder. He's certainly having an impact test, and the funny thing about it is, is he arrived in Tuscaloosa in May, so he spent a great deal of time with Bill O'Brien watching film, discussing plays to accelerate his transition. His professionalism impressed teammates and coaches, and it's that time and energy he spent over the summer and in fall camp that is a big reason why he's made a big impact so quickly for this Alabama offense. He's a big playmaker, obviously, as you see Mechie out there well both these guys really do a good job of complimenting each other but this is his speed that just scares you to death I mean what do you want Emerson to do I mean this is a guy that can go 4-2 in the 40 so you got to stay over the top of him you're going to give him some of those extended curls off play action then you got to just tackle him but obviously Jamison Williams has been an excellent addition from Ohio State providing that spark that big play potential that they desperately needed he's been excellent so far this year Think about the recent run of Alabama receivers, the recent first rounders, and Devontae and Waddle and Judy and Ruggs, and you get the transfer in and does stuff like that. First half stats are brought to you by PlayStation. Yeah, as you can see this, you see that. That obviously uh, 14 seconds added on that last yeah, Alabama right. touchdown drive. First half in 14 seconds. And, and both teams with 200 total yards in the first half. Of course, Alabama, a little bit more, just a little bit more. I guess balanced, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Both teams relying heavily on the pass, but Mississippi State, now how do they answer after Alabama was able to put together a beautiful start? What do you say about you're going to need more than threes? A couple of field goal drives that are grinding things out and getting gutsy as they go to Jaden Wally here, and Alabama just does that 14 seconds against Mike Leach's team. You don't need to change who you are. You just got to continue to play one play at a time if you're Mississippi State. Still be methodical. Don't need to burst into hyperspeed just yet. Rodgers looks quickly to the right, and he gets it to Wally again. He was the hero week one with a late touchdown against Louisiana Tech. They trailed by 20 in that game in the fourth quarter and then he put the Bulldogs up and rallying that comeback with Wally. I think he's going to be important here in the second half if Mississippi State's going to claw back in. These slot receivers have to win one-on-one. -on Short pitch to Johnson on second and three. And with that, he'll have the first down. I think the big plan for Mike Leach here in the second half has to be get the ball out of Will Rogers' hands really quickly and don't, under any circumstance, allow Will Anderson, the defensive end that's lined up at the bottom of the screen, do not allow him to get in one on ones. So if you have to take two offensive line to make sure he's blocked, do it. It's well worth the sacrifice. And launch it on a go route. Some contact there as trying to make the diving effort was Tulu Griffin. And with that, the flag comes in against Jalen Armour Davis. This was a really nice throw on the fade. Interference. Defense number five. 15-yard penalty. First down. As you can see, 
A lot of contact there from Armour Davis. That's a good call by the official and honestly a good penalty by Armour Davis because if he doesn't interfere, that's likely a big completion because of how well thrown the football was. Rodgers gives to Johnson again, and Johnson is tackled by Christian Harris. Three yards for Johnson. This is obviously a massive drive for Mississippi State. Not only did Alabama get points on their opening position in the second half, you have to answer, and you have to re-engage this fan base and this crowd because it's awfully quiet, the most quiet it's been in here after that most recent Crimson Tide touchdown. Quiet is not a word you use often here in Stark Vegas. That will help get them going. That is Tulu Griffin. And as they have the ball down to the 25-yard line. This part of the field that gets very challenging for this style of offense. Not quite here at the 25, but as that field condenses, Mike Leach takes advantage of every square inch. Well, when there's less room to work with, it becomes more difficult, which means you have to lean on the run game. Let's see as they move a little closer to the end zone if they give it to one of their talented backs. Rodgers to the end zone, and that was off target. That was to the inside of Christian Ford, so it goes incomplete. So far here early in this half, I've been watching pretty closely the body language of Will Rodgers. For those that are just joining us, he landed hard on his right shoulder early in the first half. So far, I haven't seen him grimace. I haven't no. seen him grab that right shoulder. So maybe he got some treatment there at halftime, and, and hopefully he's a little closer to 100% here in the final 30 minutes. On second and 10, and he was trying to get it Polk's way, and he just sails it away. And the third down. You can see no grimace from Rodgers, but like I said, this is the part of the field where it becomes increasingly difficult when you're an air raid style offense. And I don't think field goals at this point, Tess, throw them out the window. If I'm a Mississippi State fan, I don't want to see Rees anymore. Not because I don't love him, but because I know the only way back into this game is by scoring touchdowns. So I would expect two downs to get it here for the Bulldog offense. Quick strike, looking for Wally, and it's going to be first and goal, Bulldogs. That's 17 yards on third and 10. So far, Alabama's had a lot of success on third down, bringing pressure and playing man coverage behind it. That time, Malachi Moore just gets beat by the slot receiver, Wally, on a slant route. It's a beautifully thrown pass for the conversion from Will Rogers. Number Moore was ejected for targeting early last week against a and on fourth play of the game, he was missed. Got it. up in coverage there, first and goal. You got to challenge the defense in the run game here. You have to. They're asking for it with only three down defensive linemen. And that's what they do, and it doesn't matter at all. Anderson was knifing in, as was To'o To'o with the tackle. The left guard there, number 58, Cameron Jones, just completely unaware with where To'o To'o was. You'll see To'o To'o lined up there just inside the hash. He's completely unblocked into the backfield. Just really poor job of communicating there along the offensive line, leaving the unblocked player free. Second and goal. Rodgers incomplete as Tulu Griffin was coming across and dragging with him. It'll be third and goal from the nine-yard line. And this offense is great. I mean, it's fun to play in. You're going to get a ton of attempts. You're going to move the ball really well between the 20s. But when you get down in this part of the field, Mike Leach, Art of War, take advantage of space, timing, attack. And that's exactly where this becomes incredibly difficult because you can no longer stretch the field vertically because there's a back of the end zone. You only have 20 yards to work with 
from this part of the field. So you have to stretch them horizontally, and there's less space for the defenders to potentially occupy. So they have to be able to run the ball down here, and nothing going on first down sets up than being behind the sticks. Rodgers out the back of the end zone. And they're going to talk it over and drop the flag again. They had this conference Attention before. Rounding on the offense, number two. Spot foul, loss of down, fourth down. Well, let's take a look at it. I mean, he just airmailed it out of the back of the end zone. His receiver really wasn't on the same page. His receiver ran a corner. I think he thought he was going to be working the middle of the field. So just a miscommunication between him and his slot receiver, Calvin. You said you want sevens. Mike Leach sends Rees out for threes. Made from 44, made from 37. This again from 37. And they cut 22 to 19. Bama was quick strike. Mississippi State slow roll and only three. Well, this season, along with her contributions to University General Scholarship Funds, for every field goal and extra point made, all state will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief. Thank you, all state. They've donated well to this point tonight. 28 to 9, Alabama. Three field goals from Rees from Mississippi State. Spectacular start to open up this second half for the time. Bryce Young. And Jamison Williams for a 75-yard touchdown. Williams back deep now on kickoff return. One of the most dynamic game changers in college football. The transfer from Ohio State. And here he is in stride on the return. Catches a lane. Flag comes in from all the way back at the 10-yard line. Uh, Williams was so good last week when they were trailing A&M as well. During they the used return, him to spark the comeback. Holding on the return team, number 42. Ten-yard penalty. First down. Katie. Well, guys, last weekend, former Alabama quarterback Mac Jones texted Bryce Young after the loss, sharing his thoughts and advice. Of course, the two grew close a season ago. Bryce Young said, I got a front row seat to watching how Jones led, how he worked, how he was the leader that this team needed and the preparation that it takes to be the quarterback here at Alabama. The two talk every single weekend. It's a relationship Young says he values a great deal. And Greg, you know better than anyone, I just feel like the quarterbacks who play for this program genuinely care about the success of the guy that comes behind them. Well, absolutely. Ryan Robinson, and she gets out to the 22 yard line. And I think a big part of that too is, I mean, you don't realize, I think a lot of people don't realize just how much your backup helps you. I mean, see, he's your eyes from the sideline and you grow really close. I mean, the guy I backed up sitting about 25 feet to my left, John Parker Wilson, we're extremely close. I mean, it's just, that's what happens. You want to make sure that that backup quarterback, you have to trust them implicitly because the coaches are going to see things one way, but the quarterback sees it from the perspective in which he was repping just like you were all week long. So it's incredibly valuable, and it's great that both Bryce and Mac have that relationship to lean on each other. John Parker, of course, who was the starting quarterback for Saban's first year on the job. Taken down is Bryce Young by Aaron Brule. Last year, he led all linebackers in the country in quarterback pressures. He gets to Bryce Young here. And a great job there, just going with an internal cross dog as they try to get Brule in one-on-one -on -one against Dalcourt, the center. He wins a cross face. Dalcourt can't recover. Just a great sack there by Brule. Pass protection, a bit of a concern for Alabama this year. They're not used to saying that. Last week, they went down four times to Young and was hurried. Mechie. 20-yard line on second and 20. Just five yards there. He's third and long. 
Lule has the tackle. That's Mechie. Young nearly tripped up, keeps his footing, and makes it to the 30-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Punt team will be trotting on out. And it was Wheat and Watson who were able to sandwich Bryce Young. That was a really nice job there by Mississippi State's defense of forcing the negative play on first and 10, getting Alabama behind the sticks, and then dropping everybody back in coverage, rallying up, making a tackle in the open field. Just a really nice sequence there by the Bulldogs and their defensive coordinator, Zach Arnett. Burn it. Knuckler takes a bounce. A lot of traffic around it. And it looked like there was some contact as there's a fight for the ball. Jaden Wally was the return man. Alabama's claiming possession. And Wally comes up with it. It's a 50-yard punt. Under eight minutes to go here in the third. Bama's been in control, but the Bulldogs have the ball when we return on a beautiful night with the big crowds out in Stark Vegas. SEC football finals an absolute must watch. Hey folks, time to represent your school. Submit your best fan video to hashtag show your Saturday. You may get your 15 seconds of fame. Listen, around the SEC today, Georgia did what Georgia does. They beat Kentucky. That was a big win for Auburn at Arkansas. Massive. And it was a really a gutsy performance. I thought Bo Nix was outstanding. I mean, he looked very poised, very accurate, especially on downfield throws. His throws that he'd struggled with. But the shocking performance of the day to me was LSU. I Wasn't still, it? I can't even get that out of my head. My mind is blown. Correct. With what we just saw from LSU. Their four best players have shut it down for the year, right? They, they had 60 players available today out of a, a normal 85. And my goodness, for them to put on that performance, both offensively and defensively, more ways offensively than defensively, but man, it was a heck of a job by Ed Ogeron's Tigers. Will Rogers goes down again. This time it's Henry Toe Oto with the sack. You'll see Toe Oto lined up at the top of the M in Mississippi State. He just wraps right around. He sees Scott Lashley, the right tackle, engaged underneath, and no one taking care of the edge. He just loops right around and drops Will Rogers for a sack. Excellent recognition by the transfer from Tennessee. Second and 16. Rodgers plenty of time this time, and coming back to the ball was Makai Holt. So he picked up nine yards after the sack. Really nice job there on second and long, trying to get half of it back. Really good throw there, and a good job by Holt coming back down his stem to get friendly for the quarterback. Third and seven. Rogers goes down again. Seventh set. Hey, the original Will Rogers, the actor, the humanitarian, his famous quote in American history is, I never met a man I didn't like. That's what he would say time and again. This Will Rogers has met plenty of men he doesn't like. Like the Alabama front seven crashing home on him with Will Anderson leading the charge. How about it? I mean, Will Anderson, we said it at halftime. We said it in the first half. If Will Anderson gets a one-on-one, -on -one, it's over. Right there, another one-on-one -on -one against the right tackle for the Bulldogs. He wins inside as his quarterback steps up and drops him for his fourth sack of the night. Third punt for Archer Tra Trafford. JoJo Earl calls for the fair catch, and he muffed it, but then was able to secure it. And it was just a little moment 
of angst there. But nothing to worry about with that guy. This is what an All-American looks like when he calls out his teammates. When he says, I'm going to hold everybody accountable, including myself. Will Anderson's been dominating. This was JoJo with the freshman with those quick hands. Bama with the ball when we return here in Starkville. Oh, that music. Oh, that music. Tuesday night NHL on ESPN. Islanders, Blackhawks, 8 Eastern on ESPN. And, of course, the app. So good to hear that music again. Great action of the NHL back on this network. Bryce Young on first down. And as he gets it out to Mechie. Mechie has been his favorite target. Eighth time he's looked his way. He's over 100 yards. As he gets the completion for 14 yards there. He's got seven catches for 117. So far, they've obviously committed to the play action pass here in the second half. Two snaps, two play action passes. Williams going to test that right side. Not much there. Hey, speaking of the NHL, Greg, obviously you live in the great state of Alabama, been years down in the south. Do you believe there are three NHL players who were born in the state of Alabama, one <laughs> from Mississippi? I would not in the have, history of the league. I would not have guessed that there were that many from the great state of Alabama, but the great state of Alabama has produced a lot of remarkably talented athletes at so many different sports. I can't say I'm shocked, but man, to have four from these two states is pretty remarkable. Able to secure that, and in the face of pressure, goes downfield and a diving catch by Slade Bolden. What poise by Bryce Young. I mean, unbelievable. The ball is snapped way to the left. I don't know how he even corrals it. He gathers himself, even though there's two unblocked Mississippi State Bulldogs coming off the right side. He moves a little bit to his left. As what a throw by the quarterback. Man, that was an unbelievable play by Bryce Young. Now they're going to review the catch by Bolden, but look at this from Bryce Young. I mean, look at the snap. Way high and left. You got unblocked guys coming off the right-hand side. You know they're coming, so you got to drift and buy time. And the play to Bolden is actually a slow-developing route. So a lot of guys just panic, throw it out of bounds, throw it at a guy's foot. Bryce Young gives it time to work. Let's see, is that ball secured? It's moving a little bit, but I don't think there's anything on that to suggest it should be overturned. I think this call is going to stand. You know, you and I had a conversation earlier today over, I think, our eighth coffee, and it was how you describe him as just having this level of maturity. Now, maturity is not something that we talk about often with young quarterbacks in college football, with guys who are in their first year. We, re we rarely talk about that. We typically overuse descriptives of their great physical skills. But that is often the first word that comes to mind with Bryce Young. Right. But the physical skills, you know, some of those things just can't be taught. I mean, it just it's you either got it or you don't. He clearly does. But this part of your game, to have it just six starts in is unbelievable. I mean, he's got such maturity, such comfort. And he never panics. I mean, I think a play like that, a lot of young guys panic, run out of the pocket immediately. As soon as the snap's off, take off. Not him. Hey, John Perry, our rules expert, let's bring you into the conversation on this catch by Bolden. Tess, good evening. Not enough to change. It's, it's uh, control prior to that ball hitting the turf. Does it move a little bit? Yeah, but not enough to make it incomplete. I would go stands. That's what I would go to. I'd catch no catch is always dicey, and there is some gray area there. It's almost impossible to make anything as far as catch no catch black and white and in this particular case I just don't think there's enough I mean I think the ball moves a little bit but it feels secured when you look at Slade Bolden it was a heck of an effort from him as well if it was called incomplete on the field I think it'd be incomplete if it was called complete on the field I think it's called complete I just don't think there's anything on the video that suggests a change in the outcome needs to be made Right there is. So Perry says catch. I say catch. What do you think, Tess? Oh, I always go with Perry. Super Bowl official. John, what is the one thing they look for in that sequence? You've always talked about the hands being underneath the ball. And when, usually when it takes Try this to long, find the best, 
best angle that you can find to confirm it or reverse it. After review, it was an incomplete pass. Wow. It'll be third and wow. eight at the 32-yard line. I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised by that. And that's the reaction that the home crowd absolutely loves. Usually when it takes that long, though, they're looking at a few things. Original spot, down in distance, how much time is left, et cetera. So a huge call there in favor of the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Now Bama facing third and eight from their own 32. Wipe off the catch, put a little pressure on third down. Young, gonna run it, and he's gonna get it, and then stride out. Good job. So on third and eight, he goes for 13. Really good job there by Bryce Young. He's not a guy, when he leaves the pocket, he leaves that passing posture, he's not often looking to run. But in that particular case, there was really nobody around Mississippi State on the left side. They brought pressure and overload to the right. It was well protected, and Young saw a lot of green grass, which he took advantage of. Robinson charge ahead to the over the 48-yard line. Arizona State and Utah still to come. Williams motions across. Bryce looks that way. Now gets the eyes to the other side and it's incomplete. As he was looking at Billingsley, the third and six. Zach Arnett, young defensive coordinator. What will he bring against Bryce Young? He's brought pressure the last couple times. He's known for mixing it up. I think maybe this time, maybe they sit back a little bit. They go with four down rush, no blitz. See if they can't keep it in front of him, tackle him short of the sticks. Showing pressure. And getting it out of the backfield is Robinson, and look at him turn it on. B-Rob, TD, tied. 51-yard touchdown, Brian Robinson. And Young read it perfectly. And you live by the blitz and you die by the blitz. A little surprised that Arnett tried to heat Bryce Young up. He's done such a great job finding his hot routes, finding his open receivers. And this is just a wonderful job of taking advantage of leverage and finding the uncovered guy against an all-out pressure, cover zero from Mississippi State. Explosive plays for Alabama tonight. They've gone for 41 yards, 75 yards, and this for 51 yards. Yeah, and as you can see, I mean, Bryce Young knows it's all out pressure. It's a flat top defense. Those guys are coming. You know that one of the guys is unblocked. He's yours. You own it. But as a result, you're going to have a guy in open space, and especially when you have a running back. Not a lot of teams are going to go with a five-man protection with five guys along the offensive line in protection. And then the hot outlet is going to be the running back on a little out route. I mean, that's almost uncoverable because the guy responsible for him has to peel. So Brian Robinson is wide open. Young knows exactly where to go with the football. Very calm, retreats just a little bit, invites that rusher and delivers a strike and Robinson does the rest. Just an excellent job of execution there from the Alabama passing attack. You blink and it's 35 to 9. With that, a chance to check in with the studio and Matt.
All right, guys, they've gone to the half in Rocky Top, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Snoop Connor right up the gut right now. Rebels 24-12 lead over Tennessee. Big one of the ACC, Boston College, NC State. Problem for Boston College special teams. Grant Carlson can't come up with it. Devin Boykins scoop and score for the Wolfpack up 17-7. Back here in Starkville, Alabama's played more games against Mississippi State than any other opponent in their history. And right now, the home team's in a big hole. As Johnson takes it ahead for the Bulldogs. Johnson a little slow to get up. He was a little hobbled earlier, too. And it's the second time now where he's gone to the Bulldog bench in a little bit of pain. Hopefully, he's OK. So Woody Marks comes in. Rogers on second and seven. Quick hitch that time to Calvin. Woody Marks, the running back number seven, who just came in. Yes, his first name, Woody. His actual birth name is Jaquavius, but he loved watching nonstop his favorite movie as a kid, Toy Story. So Woody was the nickname, and it stuck. I love it. He's a great player, too. It's exactly what they need in this offense. Excellent catching the ball out of the backfield. And he, along with his partner in crime, Will Rogers, there in the backfield, they're going to set a lot of quarterback to wide receiver, quarterback to running back receptions and completion records here in Starkville, that's for sure. For the snap, false start. Offense number 58, five yard penalty, third down. That's a Starkville native, Cameron Jones. As you can see, Mike Leach has to be a little frustrated. They've had some good drives, haven't been able to finish drives. So far, they've made a few too many mistakes. And right now, with their inability to protect Will Rogers. I mean, it's Thanksgiving dinner for Alabama pass rush. They know what's coming, and they can just tee off. They've had seven sacks tonight. And that was almost going to be number eight if he didn't throw it away. Armour Davis was coming in on a corner blitz. And it's going to be one of those nights for Will Rogers. But it's a tough ask for Mike Leach and the Bulldogs. You know, he would tell you, hey, we feel like we're a work in progress. We feel like the program's headed in the right direction, but understanding where the Bama program has been for years and the place they're in this week, when you're coming off the kind of loss they're coming off of and the way Saban uses that as a tool and device. Yeah, they are hungry tonight, especially on the defensive side of the football. I think they were a little frustrated with some of the things that were said throughout the course of the last week about their performance. Earl calls for the fair catch at around the 40. Well, guys, most quarterbacks sit next to their receivers over on the sidelines. Not Bryce Young. After that last touchdown, he wedged himself between Evan Neal and Chris Owens, putting his arms around both offensive linemen, just showing some love to his big men up front who are doing a lot of great work for him tonight. Well, that's a good guy to put your arm around. Big number 73 who goes 6'7", 350 and was just named to the midseason first team All-America team by ESPN.com. As they noted, he's only allowed one sack in 206 snaps coming into tonight. Williams on first down. But Evan Neal, yeah, how about this offseason when Evan Neal put that box jump video out there and that <laughs> stuff goes viral, where the big guy at 350 pounds goes up 48 inches and then splits the legs. I think I've seen that video 4,000 times. It just doesn't make sense. No. Like, from a physics standpoint, it doesn't make sense that a body that big can jump that high and be that explosive. I think the offensive line deserves a ton of credit for how they perform a night. Challenged throughout the course of the past week and have answered that challenge tonight against a good front. Second and three, and Williams was completely untouched until he was 10 yards downfield. It's another first down for the tie. Another guy in particular that I think deserves love, man, Chris Owens. He has bounced back tonight, holding down the right side of that offensive line after he was going through what was described as a little bit of a competition this week with some of the freshmen. J.C. Latham, 
and Damian George. They were starting to breathe down his neck because he just was not playing to the level that he's capable of playing. Well, tonight, he's been a big reason why they've been getting a lot of good push along the right side of that offensive line in the run game. He's really played well tonight compared to where he was a week ago. A week ago was the upset loss against AM. Flag is down as Williams gets the carry. Owens got beat for a sack. Later, a false start on fourth down, but he's playing to his talent and his experience now tonight. The graduate student from Arlington, Texas. You mentioned J.C. Latham. On the offense, more than four in the backyard. Five-yard penalty. Third, second down. J.C. Latham, part of that tremendous recruiting class who you got to think will be hitting the field soon enough, but he was number two offensive lineman in the country last year. Number five overall player, according to most of the rankings, so Bill O'Brien has a lot of talent still to come on that offensive line. Yeah, they're very talented, they're just young. And when you're a young player, it takes time to grow. So right now, Owens is certainly the best man for the job on the right side. Well, Alabama got the ball to start this second half. And they said, we're gonna go full throttle right away. Bryce Young went to Jamison Williams, and Williams with all that speed went for 75 yards. And then Brian Robinson went for 51. And that's why the scoreboard is lopsided with an elephant on top. Glad you're with us watching the SEC on ESPN. Joe, Greg, Katie, and hashtag that guy <laughs> on college. Ain't it grand? Start of the fourth quarter, Robinson with a spin move and gets the most of it, as he has for most of the night. Crumity with the tackle. But Robinson has been sensational as a weapon every which way. How about my guy here, though? I mean, just all in his phone, checking Twitter. He's going to have a ton of mentions, ton of follows. Young gets it complete as he's able to connect with Holden. Bryce Young just continues to be very efficient, on time, very accurate with the football. I mean, just right in between those two ones of the number 11, right in the middle of his chest, made him wear that one. Here's Robinson trying to get to the edge, but instead he's driven down by Buki Watson. Buki Watson, who is known as Little Buki because dad's Big Buki. These linebackers have been flying around tonight, man, but they've had their hands full. I mean, the amount of different looks that you have to account for from Alabama's offense. In this particular case, you got two tight ends set with an excellent running back that can catch the ball out of the backfield. Bryce wants more, but he doesn't get it that time. That was too far for a streaking Cameron Latu. Latu was the breakout star of the spring. Of course, everybody was raving about Jaleel Dillingsley, the athletic tight end, and then number 81 says, hey, I can play too. A more traditional Y tight end, hand in the dirt tight end. Does a great job in the run game as well, but man, he has been a force catching the football. Third and 10. They drop eight against Young. He pumps and then he runs and he darts his way inside to the end zone. They said he got in. Take a bow, young man. You've been sensational tonight. 13-yard dance to the end zone for Bryce Young. He's close to stepping on the line there, but what a move he put on. And then watch at the end. Right there. It's a great effort from Bryce Young. Rolling on the field was a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. Let's take a look at that foot right there that looks close but that one yep. clearly out of bounds where's the ball when that right foot goes out of bounds is the other question too but just a great job there by Bryce Young look at that foot the left foot looks okay the right foot however clearly out of bounds but where's the ball at that point and we got to look to where listen it appears that's before he stretches out the ball here's the pylon cam you can't see the foot at that point
There you go. Where's the ball? Looks like it's going to be probably on the half yard line, maybe just inside the one. Either way, first and goal. But how about his body control? It was amazing. I mean, forget the ruling on the field and what we're doing with review. Just how about the athleticism and the body control of Bryce Young? Yeah, just really nicely done there along the sideline. I mean, just knowing where you're at, knowing what you need. After review, the player stepped out of bounds at the one yard line. It'll be first and goal from that spot. Just a really good job there by the quarterback. And a lot of people have been clamoring for Bryce Young to use his legs more. I mean, he's got that in the arsenal. I mean, but one thing I would say is, I mean, he can run. We, we know that he can run. But the big plays happen when you break the pocket and throw. So still want him to continue to be aggressive throughout the second half of the season. But when the opportunity is there to use your legs, there's no shame in picking up 10 to 15 yards if nobody's going to account for you in the run game. Robinson stacked up and trying to break free, but he is tackled for a loss. So it will be second and goal. That was a loss of two. And a great job there at the line of scrimmage by Brule, who really ate it up, and Jet Johnson, too, just clogged the middle of that hole. A great job there by the Mississippi State front and being strong at the point of attack. Second and goal, Robinson straight ahead, driving ahead and getting in for his second rushing touchdown of the night. Oh, what a difference a week makes. No doubt what they're going to do on this part of the field here in the second half of the season. Just churning, as you can see, Robinson Appearing to cross the goal line there. As every play is reviewed, every this scoring play is reviewed, is especially, review. but does look as though he crosses the plane before he's brought down. Nice run there by Brian Robinson. It's been a nice year by Brian Robinson, hasn't it? You know, there was so much talk in the offseason of, okay, so Najee's gone. What was it going to be like? A little bit running back by committee. Everybody was raving about Chase McClellan and what Williams could do. And Trey Sanders, always the fan favorite, right, of right. what he could be. And then here's old reliable who's waited his turn, Greg. Yeah, he has. And I, I thought it was going to be Trey Sanders who was going to be the guy. But he just hasn't come back yet After to the point. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's a touchdown. He hasn't come back to the point where he's the same player after the injury that he sustained to his lower body after the car accident. So when you look at Brian Robinson, what was most impressive about him is how he's transformed his body. Brian Robinson was 235, 240 pounds and was really a bowling ball with the ball in his hands. Well, he's leaned up, really worked hard on the offseason and changing his body to become a more every down back and look at the results. I mean, he's been outstanding. Sure has. So has this Bama offense in the second half. They're up to 440 total yards and up 42 to 9. Was there a singular moment? Was there a team meeting? Was there, is it the locker room? What was that moment like and what did you say to the team? I mean, what I've, I've, what I've said to you guys, you know, we have to do a better job. Football has to be the most important thing. You know, that's the biggest thing when you come to Alabama. That's the standard. Football is the most important thing, and that's what I express to the team, and that's what it has to be, and it's going to be that. Will Anderson was visibly frustrated during Monday's presser. He sent a similar message after the Florida game about guys needing to put football first. He said it wasn't taken seriously then, but he hopes it resonates with his teammates now. I'd like to think Mr. Anderson is pleased with his team's performance tonight, guys. Katie, but how about his individual performance, huh? Six tackles, four sacks, pass broken up, five solo tackles.
Flag is down after that opening play of the series by Mississippi State. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 50 on the defense, 15-yard penalty, results in a first down. Plan to play is brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. He's been unblockable. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. He has single-handedly taken over this football game. When working in one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, he's been in the backfield beaten. The right tackle, Scott Lashley, inside, beating him outside. Hustle blitzes, hustle plays. He's been outstanding tonight for the Crimson Tide. Incomplete as Rodgers was looking for Polk. And I think when you hear and read between the lines of what he was saying, you got to put football first, got to put football first. You know, it makes you think, what is he indicating there? And you wonder, too, in the ever-changing landscape that is college football, with the high-profile platform that Alabama plays on on a weekly basis, there's tons of opportunity for NIL. There's tons of opportunity to potentially find distractions. And I think that might be what he's indicating, is that there needs to be a newfound commitment to what's going on right in front of you. And that's this practice, or next practice, or the next day, or the next day. And you know, he issued that challenge. and. He's responded beautifully, and I think his teammates have certainly followed his lead. They're down in two. Rodgers flanked by Marks. He's been tough tonight. He's just been overwhelmed by this Alabama front. Third and two. He'll get the first down that way as he goes to Wally. And that conversation marries up to what Nick Saban said to us last night, Greg. He said, you know, because Anderson mentioned the Florida game, how he dug into everybody on the close call, and then he said the message clearly wasn't heard. And Nick said, I think the worst thing that can happen to a team is to play poorly and win because you think things are okay, but you still got tons of things to improve on. Right. It's when you play the way they did last week, you'll lose a heartbreaker late. Now you know. Now it hits you right in the face and you realize, and then you come out and you look like this defensively. And that's the thing. We said it right in the open. First comment I made tonight on the year was you either suffer the pain of discipline or the pain of disappointment. And if you don't suffer the pain of disappointment, it's sometimes difficult, especially for young players, by the way, who aren't really exactly sure, never lost a game in a Crimson Tide uniform, some of them. So it's, I think, a little bit difficult sometimes to take it one day at a time because you're thinking about the playoff, you're thinking about what's next, you're thinking about the SEC championship, etc. instead of focusing on what's right in front of you. And that's been the message, I think, this week. Well, you mentioned losing in a Crimson Tide uniform. Well, not many have since 2008, right? They've only lost 18 games, so 17 times previous to this. And they've bounced back with 15 wins. And then you say, well, okay, the other two losses, what were they? Listen, they were Sugar Bowls at the end of the 08 season and the 2013 season. They weren't regular season back-to-back -back in the midst of the fight. They're Sugar Bowls with the month off where the landscape changes after a loss. I'm going to roll them down there on third and 10. And it was Marks who had to go low to catch that ball. So that'll be a loss of two. But I do think when you talk about those back-to-backs, I mean, fool me once, right? Fair enough. Fool me twice, that's when it becomes real problematic. But as of right now, obviously a lot of things that have really pointed to the success of Nick Saban coach teams following a loss. I mean, it's, it's remarkable. You referenced the two bowl games. I was a part of one of them. You see it coming from a mile away, and it's just... It's hard to regroup in that setting, but when it's week to week, he does a remarkable job of making Before sure snap, you focus up the following the offense, week after 13, you're beaten the week previous. Third straight Mississippi State punt. Just over 10 minutes to play. It has been full throttle Bama in this second half. It's a big-time Bulldogs roll, as good as it can be. This thing travels down to nearly the one-yard line. We'll size things up on the national front when it comes to path to the playoff for Bama when we come back.
ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway. See, TDP, Ty Davis Price had 287 yards rushing today. It's a school record. Huge win for Bo Nix and Auburn against number 17, Arkansas. And you can wipe away that number two next to Iowa's name as Purdue beat him 24 to seven. College football rankings are brought to you by PlayStation. Take a peek at it. Obviously, get Iowa out of there at number two. They were a bit of a placeholder anyways. I don't think anyone really believed that they were the number two team in the country. It was basically like, who else do you put there? Oklahoma in control right now against TCU. See how Caleb Williams is playing. And Cincinnati, man, totally in control of their destiny. The one thing that Cincinnati needs to acknowledge, though, is that their strength of schedule will weaken compared to those teams ranked right behind them. So they got a hold serve, and I think they need to have some style points as well. Because right now, I know everyone seems to think this is the best chance for a group of five to get to the playoff. I think that's a very true statement. But I still think it's going to be dependent on what happens in the Power Five League Championships. Williams off right tackle, whole lot of green in front of him. And then Roy Dell Williams just absolutely blasts Richardson. DeCamerian Richardson came up and said, I'm going to make this tackle. And Williams says, no, I'm going to be a Mack truck. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. How about Williams right here? Great break to the outside. Good job at the line of scrimmage. And boom, they lower your shoulder. I think when you look at, at the defender, Richardson, he thought he was going to go out of bounds. As you see Holden fired up after seeing his running back do some damage. Isn't that what you want to see after last week? Even in the fourth quarter, even with a score like this, and now he goes off the left side and breaks it to the outside there and then dives ahead towards that line again. Well, let's talk about the contenders a little bit. We showed you the rankings, and you know what Georgia was able to do against Kentucky. There's the road head. They got the rivalry game. What a disappointment for Florida today against that undermanned LSU team. And they will most likely be heading to Atlanta to play for the SEC championship. How are you going to go right over uh, Charleston Southern there in, in the Georgia schedule? All right, you look at Cincinnati, what they have back. Only SMU ranked on their schedule. Like I said, their schedule will weaken. Their strength of resume will weaken as the season goes along. They need SMU to play really well here down the stretch to climb in the rankings a little bit to make that game there in November mean a little bit more. Williams. Dodges that one would-be tackler, another first down for Bama. We'll continue the conversation here with the contenders. And you see Oklahoma, of course, if they win out, they'll get in the playoff. I don't care how they look. We've seen teams look really, really subpar, but they're undefeated and they make the playoff, like Florida State in 2014 made the playoff, got blasted by the Oregon Ducks. And then Alabama, I think, still completely in control of their own destiny. Of course, next week against Tennessee. Tennessee, a team that's come to life a little bit of late. LSU not going away just yet, so some tough games remaining on Alabama's schedule, but of course, if they hold serve throughout the regular season, then they'll be a heavy favorite in every game more than likely. That'll set up one of the biggest games in recent history in college football against the Georgia Bulldogs there in Atlanta. Williams is getting his here in this fourth quarter, isn't he? Well, we have the conversation. You said that's ah, a placeholder that you sat there with Iowa at number two. Now you can wipe them out. But November 2nd is really the date you want to circle because these AP poll rankings, throw them right out the window. I don't think it's going to look anything like what they come out with when the committee gets together on November 2nd and releases the first CFP rankings. I think they'll be completely different. Completely agree because they have, I think, the benefit of being able to assess the individual data points that will allow teams to go where they're at. We'll talk about Cincinnati. They're the, they're the one that's a little bit difficult right now to project exactly how things are going to go. I think it depends a lot on what Notre Dame does down the stretch because that right now is their most impressive win, their statement, their biggest performance. Trey Sanders getting some work here. And I would turn to you and I would honestly say, if you're sitting there in that committee, and this week you may sit there and you may say to yourself, okay, so in the AP poll, here's Cincinnati moving up. You really believe Cincinnati is better than this Alabama team? No. You really believe that Cincinnati has a two next to their name, that they're better than this Alabama team? I would not pick Cincinnati to beat Alabama, no. I, I think Cincinnati's really good. Absolutely they are. Very deserving of a top five ring. I'd have them ahead of Oklahoma. I think I would have Ohio State ahead of Cincinnati, full disclosure, with how they're playing right now and how things have come alive for them. And here is Bryce Young. Hook 
chucking it up with Holden and into the end zone. And you got a half a hundo up with the tie. They're up 48 to 9. Four touchdown passes for Bryce Young. They've had seven plays of 20 or more yards, four for touchdowns, and 49 is plenty fine. 49 to nine, Alabama. Oh, the bounce back wins. On a bounce back statement, Bryce Young. Trayshawn Holden. Made it look so easy. It's been all night long. A 40 point lead for Bama as you're watching ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Subway. Everybody's smiling over there on the Tide sideline as you see Bryce Young with his old line, Neil Echoor. From Indy, the right guard, and that entire crowd has been protecting all night long. Let's check in with Matt in the studio. Joe Tess, people are going to think differently about Alabama now that Caleb Williams is the starting quarterback. He's thrown three incompletions, thrown for four touchdowns, has this 41 yard touchdown run. It is 45 24 boomer. For those waiting for Arizona State and Utah, it has kicked off over on ESPN News. ASU's got the ball. We'll move it over to here to ESPN when the Alabama game goes final. Don't you dare change the channel, Matt. I know you're a diehard Arizona State guy. Diehard Sun Devil. Don't you dare change the channel. Hmm. All right, you stay with us, buddy, until the end. There's Marks out of the backfield. So Matt mentions what's going on with Oklahoma is Caleb Williams, who is the five star all everything, number one quarterback recruit in the country. And what I liked with Caleb Williams, comes out of the Washington, D.C. area, I believe he went to Gonzaga Prep. What I like with him is his attitude saying, I want to compete in college football. I know Spencer Rattler's there. I want to go there and compete. And he has. And now he's got the starring role. This is Ford. And he is taken down on second and four. Two yards there. And I think Oklahoma is going to be a fascinating team to watch here, obviously, down the stretch. Not just what happens with Caleb Williams. What happens with Spencer Rattler? Mm -hmm. I mean, if Caleb Williams becomes the guy, I mean, Spencer Rattler going the portal? Does he stick around? I mean, I don't the, know. The guy I mean, was the Heisman favorite. He, yes, the odds-on favorite. He was the odds-on Heisman, Heisman favorite. He now no longer starts in the sport. That guy starts. That guy dominates. Will Anderson, that's what he's done tonight. Seven sacks for Alabama. Third and two. Rodgers will get it complete to Marks. Coming up on five minutes to play here. Statement night for Alabama in the bounce backer. After everybody said, oh, they're wounded. The sky is falling with the last second loss to AM. And everybody said, well, you look at what it means now for the tie. They've lost to an unranked team. Can we please stop with the narrative that AM was an unranked team last week? You look in that top 25 as he gets it complete to Ford again. And Greg, I made this statement. We've been talking about it all week long. Give me that top 25, and I'll point you to about 15 teams to 20 teams that would trade rosters right now for Texas AM's roster. Absolutely. 100% they would. I mean, AM is not, not your dad's unranked team. Please stop it. <laughs> what a joke. They are a very real roster, and Bama caught them on a hot night. There's that inside tunnel screen again. They've been trying to run that all night long. Calvin has it there. Well, the 75th season of the NBA begins this week, and ESPN has a great Wednesday doubleheader. 7.30 at Celtics and Knicks at MSG. And then Nuggets, Suns at 10 o'clock. NBA countdown will get you started at 7 p.m. Yeah, the NHL and the NBA. Are we this far into the football season? <laughs> it's a wonderful time of year. If you love sports, I, for one, love ball. 
You love ball as well, Joe. I love ball. Do you love ball, Katie? You guys know I love ball. Maybe even more so than the two of you. Ooh! Take it, Tess. <laughs> Rufus Harvey just took it, Katie, from Marcus Banks. This is a great time of year, especially as a Dodger fan, even though obviously we've had our fair share of disappointments in October. It's a lot of fun. NBA getting started. NHL is back on ESPN. So, so moved by that piece they did about the theme music for the NHL on ESPN. I mean, it was that was spectacular. incredible. Incredible. It's, it's as good as our business can be, and I would invite anybody to go on social media or go on YouTube and, and find that opening night Justin Bieber-led piece of the NHL and the NHL themes return to ESPN. Well, what do you make of Mississippi State this year, a team that has been consistently inconsistent and put a line through tonight? I know what they're up against, but a team that has scratch and claw to rally to beat Louisiana Tech as this ball is going to be picked off and it's going to be Jordan Battle again. Remember, he had the pick six earlier, so Jordan Battle is going to finish his night with two interceptions. But we will discuss the immediate future of Mississippi State when we come back here. Jordan Battle's dancing, tide is rolling. Who's up for a little NFL? You get it started with Sunday NFL Countdown. We'll get you going at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. And then it is Monday Night Football, and it's a good one. I mean, the Bills are playing red hot. They are something, and the Titans are leading the AFC South. 8 Eastern on ESPN. Monday Night Countdown gets you going at 6 p.m. Think there'll be any references to the Music City Miracle in that one? Of course, absolutely. One or two between those two teams. <laughs> hey, Paul Tyson is now the quarterback. Trey Sanders is the running back in the final minutes. Paul Tyson, I mean, you have to say this every time you mention Paul Tyson, the great-grandson of Bear Bryant playing quarterback for Alabama. Trey Sanders on the carry to the 35. Let's go to the studio, Matt. Guys, check it in on the Pac-12 game. Arizona State, Utah, Jalen, Jaden Daniels to Jalen Conyers. 12th place, 75 yards. Sun Devil strike first, 7 nothing. Come over here on ESPN after the game. Look forward to that. We will take ball deep into the night and enjoy it. 7-zip Sun Devils, 18th ranked team in the country, looking for win number six on the season. Well, Tyson goes 6'5", 228, so he's got the physical gifts, and of course, he's got the bloodline. He does, and he, he's proved a lot, too. From Hewitt Trussell in Birmingham, Alabama, one of the great high school programs in the state. Sanders nearly tripped up and then kept his balance and surges ahead. Well, the second half with the explosive plays for Alabama and then Bryce Young making his magic and Brian Robinson running downhill, Look at the second half. Look at the yardage in the second half. Yeah, and how about the performance, too? I mean, not to be outdone, Alabama's defense has been excellent in the second half as well. I mean, the offense, extremely explosive, but this is a difficult offense to contain. And Alabama did a really good job making sure that they clamp down in the red zone, and then the second half, clamping down on all parts of the field. Sanders are going to run this thing out. And so we're down to the final minute. Alabama is going to have to contend with a very different looking Tennessee team next week in what is a far more attractive game than we would have thought. Tennessee's in a battle with Ole Miss right now. That game on the SEC network with that outstanding primetime crew broadcasting it. By the way, Matt Corral in that game tonight, the Ole Miss quarterback who, whether it's Bryce Young as your leading Heisman guy or whether it's Matt Corral or there's others, Kenneth Walker at Michigan State, Corral's got 124 yards rushing tonight in that game. The star here was the defense with Will Anderson and the offense with that guy, Bryce Young, who threw for 348 yards and four touchdowns. The bounce back for Alabama. Did they ever? 
Listen to the message from Will Anderson. Did they ever? 49 to 9 as Nick Saban, his 200th game as Alabama head coach, his 176th win. Arizona State and Utah coming your way for our entire crew. Enjoy the rest of your night. That's it from Starkville. The tide rolls here. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the Southeastern Conference.